The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 29th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Uh, but we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that. It's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in the Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical, Magnificent Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Let's make sure we have a great week. Of course, this here's Tiger, Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. Right now, the Dow trade up 28 points. That's about one-tenth of a percent to the upside. Two-tenths of a percent to the upside would be the S&P 500. Trading out at 29.46. That's up six points. The NDX is up 11 points. Russell is uh, the big leader to the upside, up uh, nearly six-tenths of a percent, or nine points. We'll go explore and figure out what all that means out there. Transports are off 42. Spot volatility index is up 11 pennies. That's up nine-tenths of a percent. Leading the charge to the upside dollar-wise, it is the trade desk, booking holdings, and then Beijing. I really don't know how to pronounce this one. B-E-I-G-G-E-N-E. -E -E. Really. A I, I, guy I cannot. And I'm fairly decent at pronunciation. As you know, I butcher the English language fairly often, and that one is uh, for butchering. To the downside, it is Lending Tree off 15 bucks. Universal Display down about 10 and in Insperity down nine bucks. Goldilocks is off eight. Silver down 16 pennies. Light Sweet Crude is up 27 cents. We'll certainly take a look at all those things. But as I take a look at this screen out here, I ask you to do the same thing if you're, if you're, if you're watching us on Tiger TV. Is there anything that sticks out that says to you, I ought to explore this? Now, what I'm referring to is the equity market. So let me restate that. Let me restate this even more refined when you take a look at the S&P 500 up seven points right now, is there anything that is on this screen that is saying to you, hey, Steve-O, you, you ought to go check that out. You're exactly right. And I am glad that you made that observation as well. The S&P is up seven points. Spot volatility index is up 10 pennies right now. Is there any meaning behind that? We know that that is a potential diverging pattern. One day does not make a divergence, though. Nonetheless, hey, you and I are like Lewis and Clark. Uh, we're like uh, Abbott and Costello. We're like anybody we want to be, and who we want to be is a great explorers out there. Not that Abbott and Costello are great explorers, but you got to admit their humor was a good thing out there. In any event, uh, what we want to do is go see if there's any other potential meaning behind that. So let's go do that first. Let's go start by taking a look at the spot volatility index and the S&P 500. Now what you're going to notice when we take a look at this chart here, the bottom panel of this chart is the spot volatility index. 
It's a line chart. It has to be. Well, it doesn't have to be close. I could set that to opens or or highs or lows. I've got it set to uh, closes out here. And on the bottom panel, you will notice that the spot volatility next 50-day exponential moving average is 1421. We're well below that. But what you'll also notice, or you could notice out here, is that the low on the spot volatility index that I'm going to take a look at is April 12th on a closing basis. That close was 12.01. The next time we saw a spike low, so to speak, was on April 18th. That close was 12.09. Eight pennies, Vasily, above that. Then we go take a look at that, nice, that next spike low close. It was 12.28 on April 23rd. Subtle, yes. But what we really have here is a series of higher lows on a closing basis in the spot volatility index. It is much easier to see the divergence when we take a look at the S&P 500 because if we begin with the day of April 12th out there and the close in the S&P 500 was 2907. We're at 2946. That's 39 points higher. You can see we have rising price in the face of a rising spot volatility index bottom. When that pattern does display itself to you, it needs to make, it doesn't need to, but it should make the hair on the back of your chinny chin chin or your neck um, stand up. Now, the real key, and the real key you and I know as being these explorers of the markets is that things can get really wild if, the spot volatility index, not just that it has that rising bottoms, but that that spot volatility index closes above its 50-day line out there, which right now is resistance. But here's what we know. We've got one of those anomalies in the market that if it continues to persist, and there's no reason to think that it won't, at least right now, it's an indication of at least a retracement that would be ensuing. Well, if that's the case, uh, how do we go find that? And that is a great question out here. If we take a look at, let's just take a look at the cash indices. You know how we like to, you and I like to just simply or primarily focus on the cash indices because they provide us with much more information. If we just step back and take a look at the longer term chart out here, longer term charts, I should say, for the, for the four primary cash indices out here, the S&P, the Dow. So you got the Dow in the upper left. you got the S&P in the upper right. You've got the NASDAQ lower left. You've got the Russell in the lower right. If you take a look at the Dow, we just start with the Dow out here. What are we going to notice? Well, one thing that you and I notice is the consolidation pattern. Stevie's consolidation is basically between the 23,360 level and the 26,616 area out here. And we could go slightly higher or slightly lower, but this in essence is the consolidation. We can see that 26,616, eh, you try saying that twice, I just had to say it once, uh, but uh, that's been tested, and so far at 1.14 in the afternoon, on April the 29th out there, it has been rejected. We still remain in a consolidation pattern in the Dow. I know everybody wants to, you know, uh, get the uh, party hats and the balloons and the you know, the whatever it is that you might celebrate uh, with, uh, adult beverages, that would be good. We're still in a consolidation. Stevie says we're still in a consolidation even if price rises above this, even above 26,951. You'd have to close out next month at about the price level of uh, 27,225 in order for there to be a breakout. But that's just the Dow. That's a long-term Dow. Hey, don't let this pass you by. The Dow is still in a consolidation pattern out there. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 27, S&P is up 7. So in the first segment there, uh, we took a look at uh, primarily the spot volatility index divergence pattern, rising bottoms in the uh, face of rising prices in the S&P 500. And oftentimes, as long as that pattern persists, it's going to lead to either a retracement or a significant top. Now, don't get me wrong here. The, uh, the trend is still to the upside. There have been no levels of support that have failed out here. So I am not saying I jump on the short train. I'm trying to say to you, hey, look, the Dow is still in a consolidation pattern. The Dow is still in a consolidation pattern. That's right. And we have a divergence pattern inside the S&P 500. If we look at the S&P 500, though, we can see that it's trading above its uh, all-time high. You didn't need me to point that out to you. Its resistance level, in essence, was the uh, high out here in September in that 29 4091 level. Um, I'm going to say the S&P 500 is still consolidating out here. And its consolidation break won't take place this. Well, if we're to take place this month, it needs to be a close above 3,000. To get to 3,000 would just be a containment of a, a likely resistance area for the S&P 500. Is, do we have anything to suggest inside the S&P 500 that it's not going to make it up to 3,000 yet? There's nothing that is present at the moment. Uh, other than potential pattern, just like we looked at the potential pattern inside of the S&P 500 and the rising bottom spot volatility index. If we take a look, we've got an A to B equals CD that is underway. It's uh, blown through the one to one level on its way to one to one point two seven two. That would be twenty nine sixty six. We're in uh, wave number seven. That's letter G. There's no denying that as we speak. Well, you can deny it, but I'm not going to deny it. So that's a potential 
pattern out here. Uh, but until we see some type of bearish reversal signal and then a move to level one, then two and three of support out here, uh, the market still remain bullish. You just have to be on guard, uh, so to speak, out there. If I had my sword, I would be on guard. If we take a look at, let's just stay here. What's the NASDAQ 100 doing? Hey, the NASDAQ 100 motoring on higher above all types of resistance out there at 7,700. I can't give you a... Uh, a, an easy resistance level and take a look at this monthly chart like we can in the Dow, we can in the S&P. Uh, here, if you take a look at the uh, Russell 2000, not to evade the NDX 100 out here, it, which I won't, uh, but if you take a look at the Russell 2000, you can see 160210 on the cash indice is a key level of resistance that price would need to move above in order to get above its prior resistance out here to suggest that it wants either a further retracement, bounce higher, or move all the way back to its highs out there. But in the case of the NQ, we looked at the NDX 100. Now we're back to Stevie's equity futures contract out here. And here what we do have is we do have a top that's in place. So we do have a potential a top that is in place. Now the reason why I say potential, we've got the TD set up nine count. That was a beautiful thing. We got an A to B equals CD that's been fulfilled and completed, uh, well confirmed, not completed, but confirmed with that uh, bearish engulfing candle a couple of days ago. Um, but uh, we haven't seen price uh, even take out level one support. And level one support here would be the top of that daily profile at 77.67. So even there, those potential, and I don't know where the rug gets pulled or even if it does get pulled, but if it does get pulled, you and I won't be surprised and we'll be ready to act at that point in time. To take some early uh, early uh, setups right now, you know, then then uh, well, then good for you. I, I don't don't see it. I see potential, but I don't see anything that has been confirmed as we speak. So that's kind of the uh, overview of the, uh, the the cash indices out here and what it is that at least I'm focused on. Maybe you're focused on it now, too. And we just have to wait. The role of the market, the role of you and I, of us out there, is be able to identify support and resistance and then uh, tops and bottoms, very reversal type patterns that are out there, potential reversal patterns. And then we just simply wait for the market to do its job, which is to confirm those. Kind of like the confirmation, not kind of, like the confirmation we saw in the NQ, but it was only phase one of the confirmation out there, which was that bearish reversal candle at the completion of two different patterns that were out there. Now what we need to see, what you would need to see, um, to get you off the bullish side of the market, you'd have to see the backs broken. And the backs being broken out there lead us to those TAS market profiles. Yeah, smooth. Was that not smooth or what? Smooth as silk. But if we take a look at those TAS market profiles on the daily time frame out here, oh, you're above the daily. You're above the weekly. You're above the monthly. You're above the quarterly inside the ES Mini out there. So uh, profile-wise, this is saying, pet, no problem. No failure. That's for sure. You know, the same thing can be said about the NQ, above the daily, above the weekly, above the monthly, above the uh, quarterly out here. So, but, but we do know inside the NQ, there is a topping pattern out there. Inside the ES Mini, not to be the case. Well, don't talk so fast. No, it's in wave number seven out there. We just talked about that. So it's wave number seven. So it, too, has something to pay attention to. Uh, if we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, brand new, brand new for you, a uh, weekly box. The top of that box, 26,694, but the top of the daily, 26,613, neither of which have been tested, uh, neither have been taken out. So you do have resistance inside the Dow. Inside the Russell 2000 equity futures contract, you'll see it's flirting with 1607.40. It's tested that level. That was the high from February 25th out there. So that's really your resistance. If price take, and by the way, there's a new daily profile, 1594.50 was the top of that box, is the top of that box. Price is trading above that. But you and I know that there's resistance at 1607.40. We're not sure if it's going to hold, but we know that there's resistance out there. So how do we interpret this? Hey, Russell 2000 on a daily chart, it's at resistance. It's consolidation resistance. The Dow is trading below the top of its new weekly, and it's slightly older daily box out there. So it's just consolidating out here. If you take a look at the NQ, we know the daily time frame has given us a bearish reversal signal. 
hasn't broken the back of any support level just yet. And we know the ES Mini above all resistance levels, but it too could be. It's got some signals that haven't been confirmed as we speak. So, uh, so what does all this mean? It means just like what I shared earlier. Everything here remains bullish. We are aware of other patterns that are out there. Until we see some key levels of support fail, the move higher can most certainly continue. Now let's go to our first question that came in. This coming in from John in the Tiger's Den. And John wants to take a look at uh, Dr. Copper out here. And the question is, uh, what is the key resistance area as I see it? So excellent question. And uh, what we're going to do to answer that question, this is the July contract for Dr. Copper. If I turn price off, I'm going to just do that just to make it easier for everyone to see. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and put price back on. Which, and oh, let me do this too. Let me turn off the uh, weekly profile. We'll turn them back on momentarily. But here's one thing, John, that you should be aware of. Brand new box that formed. And um, the box is leaning. Oh my goodness, not like that tower in Seattle. But this is just slightly leaning as a bearish structured box out here in two senses. The current profile, John, formed below the prior profile. And the center line at 2.904 is closer to the top slightly at 2.931 versus the bottom, 2.876. 2.931 is your first answer. But let's come back and provide some additional, additional insight into the doctor, doctor of love, Dr. Cobb. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at uh, copper, the copper contract here for July. And uh, before break, we were taking a look at the uh, price relationship to its uh, daily profile out there, a brand new one that had formed today. And we were able to identify, uh, at least from a daily perspective, support, resistance, and the point of control where both buyers and sellers uh, believe that uh, price is fairly valued. Now what we've done here is we have turned off the daily time frame and we have the weekly time frame. So we're looking at a daily chart what we're looking at is a uh, weekly set of uh, profiles out here. What we'll notice is that the current profile that formed, it was contained within the prior profile out there, really more of a uh, meaning of a consolidation uh, that's going on. And we can just look back to the left-hand side of the chart, and we can see that consolidation. So it's, within a, so it's neutral because it's consolidating. It's neutral because it's within the old profile out here. Uh, the structure of that box is bullish in nature from a standpoint that that center line, which, by the way, is priced out at uh, 2.906, is closer to the bottom at 2.875, versus the top at 2.969. So at that point of control, right now, what copper is doing is copper has bounced up to resistance, and you really want to see copper close above 2.906. So my experience is, is that once the um, point of control level is taken out by a decent amount of margin out there, and depending on the instrument, you know, decent can be, you know, several ticks. I mean, but but you want to see price be able to take that out in a bullish structured box, then price ought to be able to make its way, it doesn't always work this way, but it should be able to make its way all the way up to the top of that uh, profile out there. And, and then you'll just have to take a look at other patterns. So copper, in essence, right now, from a weekly perspective, it's consolidating with resistance being the two point uh, nine six nine level out there and uh, glad that I could uh, provide a little bit of insight into what uh, uh, the copper contract is uh, doing so no other questions that I have out there uh, interesting um, but what but, but fine and dandy uh, so to speak so let's go take a look at I already know some of the other questions that uh, folks are interested in it's just kind of natural which might be Hey, Steve-O, what's Goldilocks doing out here? So if we go take a look at Goldilocks, let's really do the same thing, so to speak. And by same thing, what we're referring to is just take a look at those daily and uh, weekly profiles. Now, you'll notice that today's candle is orange. And when it turns orange, it's an indication that a new profile may be forming out here. But we'll have to check back in tomorrow to see if, in fact, that is the case. Here's what we know so far. A key level of support inside of gold would be 1277.20. That is the uh, bottom of the uh, June contract. Price is below the weekly box out there. That's at 12.95. So that's a potential problem for gold. Potential problem. But at this stage here, support is held. We got to call it like we see it. And so far, support is held. That's 1277.20. If uh, it closes below that. That 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 then suggests lower price. Now, it's at support here. This is daily. We've just looked at uh, the daily chart, but daily and weekly profiles. Uh, if we go look at the monthly time frame out here, not monthly profiles, but just the monthly uh, chart out here. You know, the cool thing from a monthly standpoint is that when gold topped back in uh, July of 2012, did it with a TD setup nine count, number nine, that to the T out there. When it did bottom back here in uh, July of 2016, it was a nine count that formed the bottom. The last time that we saw a little bit of a high back in July as well, of uh, 2016. That was a TD setup nine count out there. Uh, very interesting. But right now, what we're really paying attention to is the mere fact that on a monthly basis, prices come back and tested Stevie's green line. That's your level of support. That is 1277.90. So we've got two levels really to be able to look at 1277.90 on a monthly basis, 1277.20 on a daily basis. What gold is doing right now, it's testing support. But below both of those levels, they that could spell trouble. I know you say, what kind of trouble? I'd have to just go with double trouble out there. And double trouble 
for gold on a daily basis, well, that would give us a price projection, an initial price projection of 1261. That's it. Now, you can see on the daily time frame, price is also testing, like right to the T, Stevie's red line out here. So right now, gold is at basically support, or within a smidgen, a few buckaroonies of it, so to speak, out here. And so you're very close to being able to identify whether support is going to hold. And if it fails, well, your first price projection to the downside, wouldn't surprise me to see this unfold this way, is 1261. A uh, price projection number two, the one to two, one to 1.27, 2A to B equals CD to the downside is 1242. But again, we've got to call it like we see it on the chart right now. And the way we see it on the chart right now is gold has pulled back to support. Now that answers question one of the question that uh, somebody or many people had out there with regard to, you know, hey, Steve, well, what's gold doing? The other question I'm sure was, what's going on with uh, uh, the mining sector out here? I thought it bottomed. I didn't say I thought it bottomed, but somebody out there said I thought it bottomed. And, and, and uh, well, it's trading below support. So you got gold at support, but you do not have the GDX at support. The GDX right now is below support. Maybe support holds at day's end. But here's what you know right now. Support uh, from a profile standpoint is $20.84. We're at 2770. 20, I'm sorry, 2077 out there. And you're at the low of the uh, session. Now, volume is about 16 million shares. The swing point low out here is 48 million shares. That swing point low is 2067. Um, if you close below... At this stage here, it's likely to do this. Close below 21.19. You're likely, even on lighter volume, to go test that swing point low at 48.9. I'm sorry, at uh, I was looking at volume at the uh, 20.67 level. But let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Slightly more complicated. The one that I would go with out here, uh, and this is a art, not so much as science, uh, but the art that I would look at would say. You know, you don't hold this level. You're going down to 2036. That would be your 1 to 1.618. A to B equals uh, CD price target out here. So that would become a level to look at. Um, the bad news on the GDX. Let me just reload the historical data out here, see if I can get this to populate properly on my other screen before I pull it over for you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I can, I can. And this is so. This is this is this is. Be, be careful out here. So, one of the tools that you and I like to use to help identify, you know, uh, bottoms and tops out here, we like that setup nine count. And that that's where the bottom form, that swing point law that we were talking about. You can see that was on bar number nine. Now, my and what, what we also know with regard to the GDX is there really is nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. Now, how do you and I know? by looking at this chart, that there is a falling price oscillator below zero. Well, we know that because we have a price oscillator below zero when my red line is really red. When it's green, the price oscillator is above zero out there. And as you and I explored on Friday, counter trend rallies to the upside oftentimes will find resistance at Stevie's red line. In essence, what it did on Friday. You close below that TD setup nine count, it says huge momentum to the downside, so be careful out there. Be careful. When we come back from this break, we'll continue looking at the GDX because I want to show you the hammer candle from last week. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the GDX. That's the uh, mining ETF for the uh, uh, for the miners out there. The mining ETF for the miners. Really, Steve-O? That's as good as you got. Uh, what is as good as I got is making you aware of last week's hammer candles. So last week, uh, hammer candles, uh, their general meaning is that the market is trying to hammer out a bottom. And uh, the ideal spot to actually buy a hammer candle Really, it's on trading sessions uh, three through seven, basically. This happens to be trading session one. Would be, but, but it would be halfway to the bottom of the wick. So either halfway or, or in essence, uh, uh, last week's low out here. So we're very close to it. Uh, last week's low was uh, 2067. But as you and I looked at, we looked at the daily time frame chart, knowing knowing what the uh, how price is trading in relationship to its uh, oscillator and change line, Stevie's red green line out there. Um, and if you close below a hammer candle, the meaning is if you're long, you're wrong. You know, so do you be aggressive right now? If I saw some reason to be aggressive, because we saw a divergence between the price direction of gold and uh, what was going on in the mining sector, that'd be something to look at. But but I, I don't have that um, pattern out here. In fact, I, 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 you know, you and I looked at this pattern. Remember this last week as we were closing the show? We said, be careful. We said, be careful because what we looked at was a one-hour time frame. I think it was maybe, John, was that you in the den? You had brought up the hourly chart on Friday at some point. And so I just simply uh, took advantage of, of that query, so to speak, and drew in the seventh wave move. That was letter G. That's why in the ES Mini on a daily chart, you and I, that's a 60-minute chart, but the patterns work the same way. It, it just doesn't, if we're agnostic to the time frame. And so you had wave number seven. You had a three drive to a top pattern out there. Um, now what we've received on that 60-minute time frame chart, you had a TD setup nine count. It should have been the low uh, that took place at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, look, that low hasn't really been t has not been taken out, but uh, and I could see a bounce because the green line has turned red. 
It's just, it's just, I think it's too risky because even on the short term time frame, I've got to say, yeah, uh, hold on a minute here. Now, look, if you see, and it would certainly be a weekly close, if you see a close below 2057 on a weekly basis come this Friday out here, doesn't bode well for the uh, GDX out there. So here's the deal I'll summarize it for you. Um, you've got the GDX pulling back on light volume out here. Uh, we, we've we got uh, gold that's uh, flirting with some real problems. Um, make sure your stops are in place out here and watch these levels to see if they hold. We would ideally see them turn if they are going to hold on a shorter term time frame chart. And I don't have that on the short term time frame charts right now. So the game plan here is price likely to go back and at least test those levels of support which we looked at in the case of the GDX is going to be 2057 or the, uh, yeah, 2057 is going to be the area to be paying attention to. All right, so let's go to a question that did come in via email. This one coming in from John P. John writes in, can, uh, can you review the financials? Yes. Uh, I'm looking to take a call position in some of the banks like uh, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, City. I will be listing. Well, if you're so, let's take a look at the overall financials, right? As opposed to each individual stock out there. I think, in essence, that's what you were looking uh, for me. And so, let's let's start off by taking a look at the XLF. But let's do this on a longer term basis. What I mean by that is monthly. Now we'll go take a look at the shorter term. So here's what we know about the XL up. We know that when it topped out here on a monthly basis, it was that set up nine count. You got to get in the feel out here. Now, look, Tommy DeMarc's sequential and system works great out there. It's way more complicated uh, than just doing uh, nine consecutive uh, closes uh, above uh, close four bars earlier to the upside or to the downside out there. It's, 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 it's easy. It's simple. Why do you do that? Why do you do that for something that you're investing? Uh, for this reason, one, to be able to anticipate that there is a, a turn that would be taking place. Remember, we're agnostic to time frames. This was a daily time frame. We'd make that same call. If it's a monthly, that we're making that same call. And then you're looking for, in this case here, irrespective of profiles, where is it that on a turn to the downside price would be headed? Well, it would always go back to your target would be that support trend line. That's that red solid line that's on my screen out here. Uh, and what did price do going into a December of last year, November, December? Price went right down there and tested that level. So it price pulled back to support. Your question now is, would I take a look at financials? In essence, aren't you asking me now, not has it found a bottom? That was the bottom. But the question is, is now the time to go ahead and take a new position or add to a position? And Stevie's going to say, wait another day. Wait another day. I don't know what financials are going to do tomorrow. Looks like they'll continue to move higher. But right now, you're there at 2808 and 2792. That's 16 pennies. 16 pennies away from resistance, maybe closing above resistance. That would be Stevie's green line, which has held as resistance since March of last year out here. So it's really key. So if price can close above that, John P., then maybe you're on to something with regard to your call positions. Now, of course, you probably were not considering the longer term impact of what the XLF was doing, but hey, I think you need to, even though you're looking at a shorter term trade. If we take a look at the weekly time frame for the XLF, what do we see out there? Do we see any kind of topping signal at all? And the answer is no. In fact, if anything, there's an A to B equal CD to the upside that uh, could be unfolding out here. And that looks like this. And I would go ahead and take price back to the 29.97 level. Now, that was the, uh, just in case I didn't draw it correctly, let's come back over here because I can take a look at our volume pattern much easier you'll be able to see that we just want to see has the B point of that A to B equal CD actually turns out it's this trading session March 18th 381 million shares that were traded was it passed with volume and the answer my friend is no it was not does that mean that this is not a valid A to B equal CD it does not Let's draw the correct pattern that is in there right now. So I give the correct A to B equal CD price target. This is on the weekly chart, 30, 30, 13. And I uh, say that uh, there's no reason for it to not go to 31.50, not at this moment. Price above the top of the uh, weekly profiles out here. So I see what you're looking at. It looks pretty good. It's the 29th. I'd wait to the 30th. I'd just wait for that confirmation close above Stevie's green line out there. Um, this would say on a monthly time frame, though, just to give you a reward risk scenario, even though we drew an A to B equals CD, what we also want to use is all of our information out here. And all 
all of our information says that the XLF may run out of uh, energy as it gets to 2907 to 2909. 2907 is the top of the monthly profile. 2909 is the top of the quarterly profile out there. And uh, the quarterly profile is really important to pay attention to as the 2015 consolidation pattern that formed, you know, proved to be the case. You didn't see a breakout until November of 2016. And when you saw that breakout, that was your all clear bulletin to the upside. And that's what we saw there. So, John P., I hope that. So, let's summarize the XLF out here. If it closes above Stevie's green line tomorrow, the end of the month, 27.92, then where price should move to is 29.09. And maybe it can stretch beyond that and make that 30.13 level, that 1 to 1 A to B equal CD, which has not been confirmed by volume. It's not been confirmed by wide price spread on a weekly basis, uh, but still it's good enough there's no top in place, so to speak. So best of luck with those trades. And thanks for writing in. Dow's up 35, S&P's up 7. We'll be right back for the two-minute close. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 36, S&P's up 7, uh, NASDAQ up 11 points. So the, one of the things we haven't done here uh, is really looked at many of the short-term time frame charts. So if you want to get a feel for what are the markets communicating to us in the shorter term, maybe between now and 4 o'clock, let's go take a peek in uh, there. Let's do uh, this by looking at the 30-minute time frame. Is that okay with you? Well, great. Okay. So it's okay with you. It's okay with me. Here in the ES Mini, we can see that it's been moving higher, had been moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, so far, the high that came in uh, was with that TD setup 9 count. Those tops can occur on bars 8, 9, or 10. In this case here, it was bar number 10. That was exactly at 1 o'clock. Uh, we don't have a bearish reversal signal. If we had a bearish reversal candle that had formed afterwards, going into 1.30 or 1 that we could see at 2 o'clock, I would say the high for the day has been put in. I can't make that call right at this moment. You could make the call if price closes below 20 or trades below on a 30 minute basis, closes below 29.47. Uh, that would be Stevie's green line. That's a level of support. Uh, then that says, yeah, price could easily pull back uh, and that the high would be in. If you see price take out the high so far, that's 29.50. Anticipate that prices will continue to go higher. That's the meaning of the ES Mini on a 30-minute time frame chart. How about the NQ? Was it doing the same thing? Uh, there you go. Buckaroo. It was only it formed its high on that ninth bar out here. Right now, we do have a uh, three candle. Uh, three River Evening Star, but we've got five minutes before the session closes, so I don't know if that is going to be the case or not. 78.52 is the number to watch there. Close below that says that price could pull all the way back to the uh, low of today's session, and that would be at 78.27 out there. So that's the NQ, shows a short-term topping signal, but support has not failed yet. The Russell doing the same thing. Uh, does it on bar number 10. Does give us a bearish engulfing candle. Has not closed below 1603. That's Stevie's green line out there. So it's kind of neutral, but it is showing topping. When I mean topping signals, that the, to anticipate that the market has made its high for the day and will pull back. And you've got the same signal-ish, although the Dow is really fighting that nine count out here. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great day.